Hello everyone, this is Voltage Development back with another Collecting Infusion 2.5 tutorial. So in this tutorial you can see in the title we are doing enemy movement or random enemy movement. Not like with Five Nights at Freddy's where you do random animatronic movement because that uses a whole different method. But this is just simply moving a 2D thing. In a random direction, and because you've got obstacle, in, you've got obstacles in the way. You want them to be able to stop when they collide with the obstacle, right? Here, let me just show you what I mean. Now, how do we do this exactly? So here we have a blank frame, and the first thing we're gonna have is an active object. Now you can clear it and just, you know, colour it if you want to. I mean, you don't have to, but you can if you want to. And now what we're going to do is, inside of this active object, we're going to go over to its settings, and on this person over here, the movement, we are going to go over to the type, static, and change this to 8 direction. You could change it to balance symbol, but because of what we're doing at the moment, we're going to keep it to 8 directions. Now normally with the 8 directions, um, you can like move it around and stuff, yeah? But, with the 8 directions, you can also move it by itself. And to do that, all we have to do is, uh, let's just do all ways. And go to the active object, and then do position, set x coordinate, or just set position or whatever, but let's just do set x coordinate to uh, the active object's position, x coordinate, and plus 1. So now what we have is our active objects just moving in one direction on the x coordinate. A bit boring, right? So now we're going to bring in another active object. And this one, again, you can colour it if you want. In this instance, you probably should colour it, actually. So we're going to colour it with uh, yellow. And we're going to like make sure that it covers the entire vertical of this place. We're not going to make it fill the entire place, because that would just be ridiculous for this tutorial. But we are going to make sure that it's on the vertical part. And... We're going to just keep the movement the same. In our uh, events, we are going to make a new condition. If the active object collides with the objects that we just brought in, then with the active object, we're simply just going to stop it. Because it's using the eight directions, we're able to stop it. And there you go. Sometimes it, uh, the active object just stops in place, will it? Yes. So sometimes it does do that, and then sometimes it can go up the thing. Um, it, it's going to go up the thing. That's not supposed to happen. The, okay, so now it's going down. <laughs> um... Um, this is not supposed to be happening. What is happening? Um, okay. When are you going to go up, active object? It's supposed to go up. And what the hell was that thing when it went right through? It shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> okay, well, at least it stops right there. But, okay, those other times are a little bit weird, but that's technically how you do enemy movement now you mm, you can still move it around um yeah, you can still move it around like so i don't get how you were able to go through it maybe it's to do with the frames per second i'm not entirely sure but you can still move it around so to get rid of the movement thing i think you'd have to like uh, wait, is that how you get rid of the movement thing? No, it's not. Okay, I have no idea how you get rid of the, the movement thing. Okay, so another way you can do enemy movement 
is by, of course, uh, having the active object and making it a bouncy ball. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. But wait, let's just see how that turns out. So he's just going to move in one direction. Right, okay. So we're going to just remove all of that. And we're going to make sure that the speed is at least, not 109, but uh, 10. So how does that go? Eh, yeah, that's pretty good. And now I think maybe we should put in another active object. And let's just say this one's going to be yellow. Resize, there we go. So then, if this active object collides with this, then it will make the active object stop. So, how will that work? That works like an absolute beauty. Okay, so... But wait, what if it wants to uh, follow an object? Say, for example, me. So, put eight directions on me, and let's make sure that the uh what's it the active object is always uh looking in the direction of me let's see how this turns out so right okay he just stops in place okie dokie okay so well at least i have learned that the bouncing ball objects doesn't really work with enemy control but another way you can also do enemy control is let's just completely get rid of the movement on that active object that we just tried the bouncing ball on. And instead, let's just do always, um, always move on the X coordinate. Um, yep, yeah, X coordinate plus one. So we're just making sure that this moves this way always. <coughs> And now, um, instead of collision between that object and the yellow one, we're gonna have we're gonna replace it with uh, is overlapping that object. So, although, actually, let's just let's just get rid of that for now. Actually, so what will this do at the moment? So it will just take that object, okay, so it does that. So now, uh, let's make sure, you know what, for now, I'm going to leave it there because I might touch on the enemy movement at a later date, but for now I'm going to leave it there because I think I might remember how to do the enemy movement, how I remember it, but it's going to take a long time process so if you guys would like to have that then let me know but um i will be giving you other tutorials about well other things later on but for now that's gonna be it so thank you so much for watching everyone i hope some of this may have helped you out if it has then awesome if it hasn't then darn but anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time goodbye everyone